What do I want to do? Let's get through it. Lesson three, technical names and uses of the parts of the upright piano action. In the practice of piano tuning, the first thing is to ascertain if the action is in first class condition. The tuner must be able to detect, locate, and correct the slightest defect in any portion of the instrument. Any regulating or repairing of the action should be attended to before tuning the instrument. The latter should be the final operation, as a thorough knowledge of regulating and repairing is practically indispensable to the professional tuner, the author has spared neither means, labor, nor research to make this part of the lessons very complete and feels sure that it will meet with the hearty approval of most, if not all, students. The piano tuner who knows nothing of regulating and repairing will miss many an opportunity to earn extra money. The illustration accompanying this lesson is from a West Wessel, Nickel, and Gross Upright Action. This firm, whose product is considered the acme of perfection, makes nothing but actions. Most manufacturers of pianos of the present day build the wooden frame, the soundboard, and the case only, the action metal plate, strings, tuning pins, etc., being purchased from different firms who make a specialty of the manufacture of these parts. A few concerns, however, make every piece that enters into the composition of the instruments bearing their names. KY is the key in its resting position. C, wherever found, represents a cushion of felt or soft leather upon which the different parts of the action rest or come into contact with each other. Their purpose, as is readily seen, is that of rendering the action noiseless and easy of operation. B and C, R, shows the end of the balance rail, extending the entire length of the keyboard. B, P, is the balance pin. This is a perfectly round pin driven firmly in the balance rail. The bottom of the hole in the key fits closely around the balance pin. At the top, it is the shape of a mortise parallel with the key, which allows the key to move only in one direction attended. The mortise in the wooden cap on top of the key at this point is lined with bushing cloth which holds the key in position laterally and prevents looseness and rattling, yet allows the key to move easily. L is the lead put in this portion of the key to balance it and to ensure uniformity of touch and quick and certain return of key to its rest position. As there is more or less difference in the length of keys and also in the weight of the hammers operated by them, some keys are leaded much more heavily than others. In some cases, the lead is inserted in the extreme back end of the key. In others, it is put near the balance rail according to the requirement. In some actions, the lead is omitted entirely, but in the best actions, it is almost invariably present. In the action of the grand piano, the keys are leaded in front of the balance rail instead of the back of it. This is due to the fact that in the grand piano the hammer rests in a horizontal position and its whole weight must be actually lifted and the force of gravity overcome, while in the upright the hammer rests in a vertical position, only requiring to be thrown forward. GP is the guide pin, generally of oval shape, with the longest diameter in line with the key. The hole in the lower portion of the key in which the guide pin works is bushed with bushing cloth and is made to fit so closely that the key will not move laterally, yet not so tightly that the key will not work easily. BM is a wooden block called the bottom, sometimes called the key rocker. It is held in position by the two screws shown and cut by which it can be adjusted or regulated. E is the extension communicating the motion of the key to the upper part of the action. There are various ways in which the extension is connected to the bottom. In this action, the extension is made round at the lower end and fits snugly into a hole in the bottom upon a felt disc. When the action is taken out, the extensions simply lift out of the holes, and when it is put, when it is put back, it is necessary to enter each one in its place. In other, in other actions, the upper side of the bottom where the extension rests has no hole but simply a felt covering upon which the extension rests. 
In this case, it is necessary to provide what is called an extension guide, which is hinged to the extension guide rail shown in the cut at the left of the extension. In actions of this kind, the extensions remain in place at all times, and the trouble of placing them properly on the bottom when replacing the action is obviated. Other methods also are employed which are readily misunderstood. Mm, whoops. Other method. Other met. Other methods also are employed which are readily understood un <laughs> Other methods also are employed which are readily understood upon slight examination but are essentially similar to the above instead of the bottom a capstan screw is used in some actions as follows CPN is a capstan screw used in some actions in place of the bottom. It is turned by inserting a pointed instrument in one of the four holes, thus raising or lowering the capstan in regulating. The lower end of the extension is felted. In such actions, the extension is invariably provided with the extension guide. B is the metal action bracket. The bracket is one solid piece of metal. There are generally four brackets in the upright action. The brackets rest upon supports in and at the sides of the key bed and are secured at the top by large bolts, BB, which go through the metal plate and into the wooden frame or pin block. At the top of each bracket is an opening to receive this bolt and a thumb screw, which fastens the action securely in position. MR is the main rail, so called because the main constituents of the action are attached to it. W is the whippin, those pieces upon which or by which the small letter G is shown are the flanges. The one at the left of the whippin is called the whippin flange. It is made fast to the main rail by a screw, and upon it the whippin is hinged by means of a center pin at the lower end. The center pin in the whippin is driven through a hole in which it fits tightly and immovably in the middle part, and it is consequently stationary in the whippin. The flange extends down at the sides of the whippin, and the hole in the flange are made large enough to receive bushing cloth, in which the center pin works freely but not loosely. All flange joints are of this nature. Some, however, are provided with a means for tightening the center pin in the middle portion of the joint. J is the jack. The purpose of the jack is to communicate the motion of the whippin to the hammer. The precise, precise adjustment of the jack and the adjacent parts upon which it depends for its exact movements play an important part in regulating the touch of the piano and will be fully entered into in following lessons. J.S. Jack Spring. Its purpose is to hold the jack inward against the nose or heel of the hammer butt. R.R. Regulating Rail. The regulating button is shown attached to the rail by the regulating screw, which is turned by means of its ring on top of RR. The purpose of the regulating button is to throw the point of the jack out of the nose of the hammer butt and allow the hammer to rebound from the string. If the button is too high, it does not throw or trip the jack in time to prevent blocking. When the button is too low, it disengages too soon and much of the force of the key is lost before it reaches the hammer. BR is the block rail, felted on the side next to the jack, which strikes against it when thrown from the nose. This rail is absent in some actions, in which case the back of the jack is felted and strikes against the back catch, which is also felted on inner side. BC is the back check, which is simply a piece of wood with a thick piece of felt glued to the inner face and suspended on a wire. BCW, back check wire supporting the back check and screwed to the whippin. The purpose of the back check is to check the hammer by coming in contact with the back catch at a short distance from the string in its return and prevent the hammer from falling entirely back to its rest position thereby preventing quick repetition. BL, bridle. This is a piece of tape about an eighth of an inch wide with a piece of leather glued to the end in a hole near the end for the point of the stirrup or bridle wire. 
The cut shows where the bridle is fastened in the hammer butt by being put into the hole in the butt, and the back catch stem covered with glue and driven in it in by it, which precludes all possibility of its coming loose. The bridle passes through a hole in the lower part of the back catch. Its purpose is to assist the hammer to return quickly by hanging to it with the weight of the whippin, extension, jack, etc., when the key is released. Thus, the bridle becomes the main factor in the matter of quick repetition. BLW, bridle wire, screwed into whippin, bent in the shape of a buckle at the top to hold bridle. BT, butt, or more specifically, hammer butt, in some cheap actions the butt is joined to its flange G, by the means described under the head of whip and flange, but in this action the center pin is held firmly in the butt by a small strip of brass containing a set screw, somewhat obscure in the cut but discernible. As explained elsewhere, all center pins turn in the flange and not in the middle part. HS, hammer shank in rest position. H, hammer showing wood body or head and covering of two layers of felt. HR, hammer rail, resting on felt cushion, C, glued to rail or bracket. The hammer rail is held in position by the rod shown under the hammer shank, which is hinged to the bracket at the lower end and which allows it to be moved forward when the soft pedal is used. The soft pedal communicates with this rail by a rod which moves it forward and thereby shortens the stroke of the hammers and produces a softer tone. SR, spring rail screwed to the brackets. This rail supports the light wire springs which assist the hammers in returning to rest position. S, string. D is the damper head secured to the damper wire by a set screw. DL, damper lever, working in damper flange G, which is screwed to main rail. S, spoon, so called from its shape. It is screwed into the whippin. When the key is struck, the motion on the whippin throws the spoon forward, pushing the lower end of damper lever forward and releasing the damper from its contact with the string. The damper is held against the string by the wire spring, which is seen running from the damper flange to the top of the damper lever. DR, damper rod. This is a rod running from the left or base end of the action to the right as far as the dampers are continued in the treble. It is acted upon by the loud or damper pedal, which raises the outer projection, and by being hinged to the main rail about the same height as this projection, the entire rod is thrown outward against the lower ends of the damper levers, releasing all dampers simultaneously. This being the only office of the right pedal, it is readily seen that this pedal does not increase the loudness, but simply sustains any number of tones struck successively, giving the effect of more volume. The student should familiarize himself with all technical terms used in this lesson, as they will be referred to frequently in the succeeding lessons on repairing and re regulating. Questions on Lesson 3 Without reference to anything but the cut, give technical names for parts of action represented by the following letters or abbreviations. 1. B N C R C G P B P K Y L 2. B M C P N E W J J S G and M R three R R B C B R B C W B L and B L W four B T H H S H R and S R five S D D L 
D R S B and B B 6 Explain the purpose and movements of the jack 7 Describe a flange and the joint of same 8 Give names of the four flanges shown in cut 9 what is the purpose of the back catch and back check? 10. Explain the mechanical action of the damper pedal and its effect when used, also that of the soft pedal. Ooh.